The question number 153 are very interesting question. I will tell you why. I had a confusion between option B which is AWS Partner Network and option D AWS Managed Services. Amazon Web Services or better known as AWS is a flexible and scalable cloud platform and one of the world's most popular suits of distributed applications. AWS consists of over 170 services such as compute, storage, networking, data centers, machine learning and analytics. And among all these services, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud EC2, Amazon Simple Storage Service or also known as Amazon S3 are probably the most popular services. And friends, you will learn all these services and much more when you are preparing for AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And this foundational exam can be a stepping stone for you to build a strong career in Amazon Cloud. So if you are ready to be AWS certified, let's get started. So let's begin part 15 with question number 146. Question says that how should an application be created to function on the AWS Cloud in the accordance of the best practices and your options are use tightly coupled components option b use loosely coupled components option c use infrequently coupled components and lastly use frequently coupled components and the correct answer for this question is option b use loosely coupled components and the reason is that as your application grows my friends the desirable attribute of the application is to break the application into smaller loosely coupled components and what will you achieve with this well, the goal is to reduce the interdependencies between the components. Thus, a change or a failure in one component should not cascade to other components. And that's the reason why from the smallest of the organizations to the biggest of the enterprise are moving towards loosely coupled components in the design architecture. And monolithic architecture is now a thing of past. Moving on with the question number 147 that says which service allows you to monitor and troubleshoot systems using system and application log files generated by those systems. Your options are CloudWatch logs, option B, CloudWatch metrics, option C, Cloud Trial logs and option D is Cloud Trail matrices and the correct answer is option A. Cloud Watch Logs. A good place to understand Cloud Watch Log is this documentation. Here you can understand that Cloud Watch Log collects and visualizes real time logs, matrices, and event data in automated dashboards to streamline your infrastructure and application maintenance. Moving on, question number 148 says that which of the following are architectural best practices for AWS Cloud? You have to pick two options and your options are deploy into single availability zone. Option B, deploy into multiple availability zone. Option C, close scooping and option D, design for fault tolerance. And lastly, option E, create monolithic architectures. The first correct answer is deploy into multiple availability zones as it increases the availability of the application. In case one availability zone is down, your application is still available. And what's the second correct option? Well, it is option D, designed for fault tolerance. Moving on with the question number 149, it says a company is launching an e-commerce application that must be available all the time. The application will run on Amazon EC2 instances continuously for the next 12 months. What is the most cost effective instance purchasing option that meets these requirements? Your options are spot instances, option B saving plans, option C dedicated host and lastly option D on demand instances. And the correct answer is option B saving plans. Let's move on. Question number 150 says the following describes an application that spans various availability zones. Given options are option A being highly available, option B having global search, option C using an economy of scale and lastly having elasticity. The correct answer is option A being highly available. Question number 151 says that what are the advantages of AWS cloud elasticity? Your options are ensure web traffic is automatically spread across multiple AWS regions. And option B is minimize storage cost by automatically archiving the log data. Option C, enable AWS to automatically select the most cost effective services. And lastly, automatically adjust the required compute capacity to maintain consistent performance. 
So what's your correct answer? Well, mine is option D. Automatically adjust the required compute capacity to maintain consistent performance. Now coming to the question number 152. Really interesting question. Question says that a small business owner who is not tech savvy is looking to find AWS certified experts for a short term project. They need a service that can help them connect with the professionals and who can offer advice and help them implement AWS solutions quickly. Which AWS service should they use? Your options are A. AWS training and certifications, option B, AWS IQ, option C, AWS support, and lastly, option D, AWS marketplace. And the correct answer is option B, AWS IQ. And now let's jump on to the question number 153, a really interesting question. I will tell you why. Let's read the question first. A company wants to migrate its workloads to AWS, but it lacks expertise in AWS cloud computing. Which AWS service or the feature will help the company with its migration? Your options are AWS Trusted Advisor, Option B, AWS Partnet Network, Option C, AWS Artifacts, and Option D, AWS Managed Services. Now friends, while researching for this question, I had a confusion between option B, which is AWS Partner Network and option D, AWS Managed Services. But I have picked option D as the correct answer, AWS Managed Services, and I will tell you why. But first, let's understand what is AWS Managed Services. Well, it helps you to adopt AWS at scale and operate more efficiently and securely. Also, my friends, AWS Managed Services leverage the standard AWS services and offer guidance and execution of operational best practices with specialized automation skills and experience that are contextual to your environment and application. And then I have one more document that I want to show you. And that is this one. It says, how do the AWS partners and the managed services work together? It says AWS managed services focuses on the infrastructure management and creating scale through automation. It also says that we work closely with the AWS certified partners in the majority of our customer engagements where they fill several areas of the customer's end-to-end -end cloud solutions and not provided by the AWS managed services such as migration consulting and application management. And finally, this last line, please pay attention. It says customers looking for a single vendor to provide both application and infrastructure management are encouraged to contact one of our AWS managed service providers. So based on those two documentation, I have picked the option D, AWS Managed Services. What is your option? Let me know in the comment section. Let's move on. Next question. Question number 154 says that which service or tool should a company use to centrally request and track service limit increases? Your options are AWS Config, Option B, Service Quotas, Option C, AWS Service Catalog, and lastly, AWS Budgets. And the correct answer for this question is option B, service quotas. And now comes question number 155. Question says that which documentation does AWS Artifact provide? Your options are Amazon EC2 terms and conditions, option B, AWS ISO certifications, option C, a history of companies AWS spending, and option D, a list of previous generation Amazon EC2 instance types. And of course, the correct answer is option B, AWS ISO certifications. And here are some of the videos that might interest you. AZ 900, 765 questions on this Azure Fundamental series. And then we also have AZ 104, very recently launched question and answer series on Azure Administrator certification. So those were the 10 questions for today. I hope you like them. If yes, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon to get the timely notifications of all our upcoming videos on AWS and Azure certification. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.